This is TK Coleman and you're watching TK's Two Cents. Today we're going to talk about nurturing dreams and noticing opportunities. Let's dive right in. A dream is like a garden. In order to experience the joy it offers, we have to do the daily work of cultivating it. You can't live the dream without laboring for it. The goal isn't to avoid effort and creative action. The goal is to plant seeds that make our work worthwhile. One of my favorite quotes is from Seth Godin, who says, instead of worrying about when your next vacation is, try creating a lifestyle that you don't feel the need to escape from. Nothing wrong with a vacation, something gravely wrong with the life that you constantly feel the need to escape from. The best way to see dreams is not as these things that provide us with an, an escape from the prison that is life. The best way to see dreams is to see dreams as the source and substance of life, to see dreams as a vision of possibility that can cause you to live your life in a way so that every ordinary moment is filled with meaning. So I like you to think about two kinds of, we'll call them happiness, two kinds of happiness. There's passive happiness, and then there is proactive happiness. Passive happiness is when you sit back and you allow the world to just pour its blessings upon you. You allow good things to happen to you. So passive happiness can be when the weather's really nice and you go sit outside and the sunlight just bathes your skin and the cool breeze just blows and just comforts you. You don't really have to do anything other than just kind of be there, kind of be around. And, and the happiness is something that comes your way. Nothing wrong with passive happiness. Passive happiness feels amazing. However, you cannot have a life of meaning if you limit your happiness to passive happiness. There is also proactive happiness. And proactive happiness is the kind of happiness that comes from always having an investment to make in the thing that is bringing you joy. So a dream is like a garden. When you go to a garden, a garden is very beautiful and it has a lot of happiness to offer you, but that garden cannot sustain itself. Every day you must till the land. You must take care of those flowers. You must plant seeds. You must water them. You must observe them to see how things are going. You have to check on them. You can't just show up to a garden and say, hey, make me feel good without anybody taking care of you. It's a two-way process. You are investing in the garden and the garden is investing in you. It's the same way with your dreams. It's the same way with meaningful work. The meaning that you get out of your work will be the result of the investment that you make in making your work meaningful. There is no such thing as a job or a career that is capable of making you happy in spite of yourself. Don't seek a life of passive happiness where you discover some career or some work that brings you joy independently of how you choose to show up. Seek out the proactive happiness, the deep sense of meaning that can come from saying, I'm going to not only do what I love, but I'm also going to find the love in everything I do. Let's go to tweet number two. Opportunities become more visible with preparation. When you decide to live a life of discipline, you develop the awareness for a life of possibility. There are two kinds of opportunities, the kinds you notice and the kind that you don't. And the second kind is a much bigger category. There are so many opportunities in life that we never recognize as opportunities because we're simply not prepared for them. The number of opportunities that you begin to notice expand. They increase when you are actually ready for those opportunities. You know, one of the funniest things about life is that when you make positive changes, people begin to say very interesting things to you. So for instance, I remember I got a new pair of shoes and I was out walking and I had a guy tell me, oh man, I really love your shoes. Your shoes are really nice. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then I got to my hotel and I got into the elevator. There was a guy in the elevator. He says, hey man, I really love your shoes. Those are really nice. I got about five compliments on my shoes that day. Never before in my life had anybody said anything whatsoever to me about my shoes. 
And I thought to myself, what, what in the world did the world think of my shoes before I got this new pair of, of shoes? Uh, another example of this would be like losing weight. If you start working out and you get physically fit and you lose weight, people will tell you all the time, right? They'll say, hey, you lost weight. You look good or you're looking more fit. They will tell you that when they notice that positive change. But then ask yourself, well, what did they say before you made that positive change? Did they tell you, hey, man, uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I just want you to know that if you get a new pair of shoes or if you get physically fit, I'll give you a compliment. I'll praise you for your discipline. No, people aren't going to say that. They're just going to accept you as you are. They're just going to say, yep, that's who you are. You're the guy with those shoes. You're the guy with that level of fitness. And it is what it is. But when you make positive changes, people will say, hey, that's awesome. That thing that you did. What does that say about opportunity? What it says about opportunity is this. When you take the time to create positive changes in your life that prepare you for new possibilities, other people will be more likely to talk to you about those possibilities and show you those possibilities. But when you allow yourself to be comfortable and to just stay where you are, whether that has to do with your physical fitness or your skill development or your knowledge, people will just accept that you are who you are and they won't talk about the possibilities that are a match for the person that you could become if you chose to develop your potential. The only way to get the best opportunities is to start preparing for them before you see them because it's the preparation that makes the recognition of those possibilities possible. All right, that's TK's two cents for the day. Don't forget to click the like button and click the subscribe button. If you have any thoughts, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave a comment and also be sure to check out Revolution of One website for any updates that we do with the different shows that we have and so on. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter too. All right, y'all. Peace out. Share this with a family member or a friend. Get it all in. That's it.